Hi class, welcome back. Now, we are going to have another new lesson for today, and that is human development. So this would be the first part. In our previous lesson, we were able to talk about, or uh, yes, discuss about perception. Now we are going to proceed to the next topic, which is the human development. Now let's talk more about it. Let's go to the next page. All right. Now let's define first what is human development. Human development is the scientific study of the patterns of growth and, cha and change that occurs throughout life. So human development happens every day. Uh, but in here, uh, human development is defined as the scientific study uh, of uh, the scientific study of growth and change of our bodies throughout our life. Okay, so, um, so human development starts on, uh, yes, human development, specifically on newborns, starts during conception. Now, let's talk more about that. Let's go and define first what is heredity. Heredity is the transmission of traits from parents to offspring. So every 28 days, a female ovulates and releases an egg cell to fallopian tube. So heredity is also known as the passing of genes from parents to their children, okay, or to their offspring. And this happens during uh, fertilization, okay. Yes, fertilization, where the egg and the sperm cell meet. So in here, it is also mentioned that in every 28 days, a female ovulates and releases an egg, uh, an egg cell to the fallopian tube. So if there is um, a sexual intercourse that have happened during those days, um, the, the egg cell and the sperm cell will meet and fertilization will happen. And from there, uh, human development started to grow. Or start, starts, rather. Let's go to the next one. At the height of co-population, co the male parent releases sperm cells. That's 300 to 500 million inside the female's vagina. The healthy sperms are programmed to swim and seek out the egg, egg cell and fertilize it. So like what I've mentioned a while ago, during uh, sexual intercourse, the, uh, the male releases a sperm and that sperm will raise uh, that, will, that sperm will race towards the egg cell, and when they finally meet, fertilization will occur. So the egg, uh, the, I, mean, I mean, the sperm cells actually contains 300 to 500 million sperm cells, okay? So, and then this sperm cells, this million sperm cells, will actually race towards the egg cells. So, ladies, that's why you don't have to chase any man because of that, because at the beginning, uh, sperm cells already are the ones chasing, uh, yes, chasing and seeking out to the egg cell. All right, so now let's talk further about the human development. So like what I've mentioned, when fertilization occurs, now there would be um, the development of the fetus, okay, zygote to fetus, and then uh, after that, once the baby is born, there would be infant. So now let's go to the eight stages of human development. So first we have the prenatal stages. For the prenatal stages, actually these stages uh, have at least uh, three phases. So later I'll be discussing more on that. So the next one we have the infancy, so that's zero to two years old. Early childhood, that's three to six years old. Middle childhood, that's seven to 12 years old. Adolescence, that's 13 to 19 years old. Young adulthood, we have 20 to 35 years old. And middle adulthood, that's 36 to 49. Late, adult, late adulthood, or old age, that's 50 years old until that. Now let's go to it one by one. Now, uh, like what I've mentioned a while ago, the prenatal stage consists of three phases, or three stages. So let's go to it one by one. So first one, we have the germinal stage. So in here... This happens during fertilization until two weeks, two weeks rather. So in here, rapid cell division by the end of the stage. The fertilized egg becomes a blastocyte, blastocyst, 
that's the cyst of that's the cyst that's the cyst about the size of a pinhead and plants itself in the wall of the uterus so in here this is the part where the the woman takes a pregnancy test and it, be, it becomes positive so that's the germinal stage in here after after the sexual intercourse and the fertilization occurs so actually um as you all know the the uh, sperm cell um uh, stays in the woman's body for at least five days so that's actually long so that's uh, that's enough uh that that's that has an, enough time for the sperm cell to actually uh to implant i mean fertilize the egg cell and once the egg cell is fertilized the implantation will occur. Implantation happens when the fertilized egg uh, will stick or will, yes, will plant itself to the uterine walls of the female. So in here, uh, uh, during the germinal stage, that's fertilization to two weeks, uh, the baby or the fertilized egg, fertilized egg is at, uh, is at least the sign, uh, size of a pinhead. Next, we have the embryonic stage. And here, it is the end of two weeks to two months. Major body systems and organs develop. Organism becomes vulnerable, vulnerable rather, to environmental influences, most likely occurrences of chromosomal abnormalities. So in the embryonic stage, after, of course, two weeks, fertilization to two weeks, we have the embryonic stage, wherein the fertilized eggs become now the embryo. So in here, uh, it, be, uh, it can be said to, to, have, to be an embryo if body systems and organs started to develop. So according to science, uh, the first one that uh, the first the first body organ that needs to develop is the heartbeat. So if there is a heartbeat, it means that the the embryo is finally alive. Okay, so that's two out of two weeks to two months. All right. So uh, also during the embryonic stage, in here, if the woman, okay, so, w some women doesn't know that they are pregnant, but uh, so that's why they keep on drinking or uh, doing um, vices. So those kind of things actually influences the embryo, and because of that, some chromosomal abnormalities occur. Okay, and also not only on the external factors, but also the genetics of the parents. So it's either uh, the the male has an uh, has a, an extra Y chromosome or the female has an extra X chromosome. So in here, during the embryonic stage, the chromosomal abnormalities is possible. So uh, that's uh, out of two weeks to two months. So during the first month in here, the measure of the embryo is a measure is quarter of an inch. Okay, so that's the measurement. And then the second one, as big as an adult's smallest toe. Wow, that's really big. Backbone formed, legs and arms begin to form, facial features take shape. So on second month, uh, if you're going to look at your smallest toe, that's actually the size of the embryo already. And then the, it already has the backbone, its legs and arms started to form and the facial features like the nose is already a bit evident evident rather next we have the fetal stage that is the end of two months until birth so the fetal stage consists uh, from from fertilization the first one would be the the, fertil uh, the egg would be fertilized and then after that uh, it becomes an embryo now it will be become a fetus that's why it's called a fetal stage so it, here it is the end of two months until birth so uh on the third month three inches uh, three inches or uh, 25 grams assumes human form large head start bone formation teeth teeth buds nails genital becomes more recognizable on the fourth month 13.5 centimeters 120 120 grams about the size of a small orange broad face eyes widely separated separated, capable of swallowing and kicking, nails or eyebrows start to grow, to grow rather, eight months, we have 12.2, five pounds, fat begins to store in the body, lungs fully developed, head or body are proportionate, 
zoom position for delivery. Nine month, that's 14.2. Seven pounds, redness and wrinkles, fade, downy hair disappears. So that was happened, okay? So as you can see in here, and on the fetal stage, it starts on the third month until the birth. Until, I mean, it's end of two months, rather, and it starts of the third month, okay? So the third month until the until birth. So I can see, as you can see, shows here the different formation and the growth development of the fetus. All right, so now let's talk more about the theories of development. So let's define first what is a theory. Theory is an organized set of ideas that are designed to explain development, essential for developing predictions about behavior. Predictions results result in research that help to support or clarify the theory. So theories are actually just uh, are a set of ideas. So it means uh, some of them are not yet proven. That's why the scientific method is uh, the scientific method and research have to be done just to prove that the theory is correct. So in here, in the theories of development, we are going to talk about more on the theories how an individual grows. That entails to their uh, psychological, to their learning, and also to their cognitive as well. So in here, uh, again, theories are just set of, an idea, set of ideas. So a lot of people can make up theories, but not a lot of them can prove their theories. So for, for one, to, to prove their theory, they have to conduct a research proving their theory or testing their, th their theory if it's correct. So in theories of development, we are going to talk about three, three, uh, three parts. The first one is the psychodynamic, which consists of Freud and Erickson. And then learning, we have Watson, Skinner, and Bandura. And cognitive, we have, the P we have PJ and Kohlberg. Now let's go first, and let's go to it one by one. All right, now let's start first with the cognitive developmental theory. So for the cognitive development or de developmental theory, we are going to use John P.J.'s cognitive development theory. So according to John P.J., there are at least four, uh, four, uh, I mean, four <laughs> development process where a child developments develop its um, cognitive processes. So the first one would be the sensory motor that's from birth to two years old. Pre-operational pre stage, that's two to seven years old. Concrete operational thought, that's seven years to early adolescence. Formal operational thought, that's adolescence and beyond. Now let's go to it one by one. All right, let's start first with John Piaget's sensory motor stage. So like what I've mentioned, it started at birth until two years old. So what happens to a child during these stages? According to John Piaget, the child interacts with the world through sensation and movement, develops ability to hold a mental representation of objects. So according to John Piaget, in here, the most uh, important aspect uh, for the child to interact with the world is by using its senses and movements. So that's why some, child, some children tends to be uh, so, um, in Filipino or Tagalog, malikot. It's because they keep on, they are trying to interact with the world uh, and they use most of their senses. They, their sense of smell, their sense of sight, their tongue, their skin, and many more. They use all of the senses to get in touch with the world. And not only that, they also use their uh, movement as well. So, to, for them to get and interact with the world. So that's why it's called the sensory motor stage because they use their senses and their motor as well. So again, that sensory motor, that's zero to two years old. And uh, in here, explores world as little experimenters and develops schemas through the senses and motor activities. So schemas in here pertains to the uh, mental representations of the things around the child. Like, for example, the first thing that the child will see, of course, would be uh, his or her mother. So, 
the child in here will use all of his sense, all of his or her senses, just to recognize the mother. All right. So whenever now she sees or he or she sees her mother, the uh, uh okay. So whenever he or she sees um a female that uh, is very caring, uh that keeps on carrying him or her, so. Uh, the child will recognize that ev anyone who has that kind of features will be his or her mother. So that, uh, f with that representation, that's called a schema. So whenever a child sees a, uh, a long hair or a black hair or what hair, uh, a female taking care of him or her, that, is, uh, that uh, he or she will recognize that as the mother. So that is the schema. So in here, <coughs> Excuse me. And here, the child will start on developing this kind of schemas. All right. So that's for the sensory motor. And uh, uh, further, it discovers relationship between their actions and consequences. So in here, the child uh, will start to develop that some actions actually has its consequences. Like for example. If he threw or he touched the toy, okay, um, not touch, okay, like, like for example, if he, okay, so if there is, um, okay, this is actually a bit, okay, like for example, a toy car, okay, so if the child touches a toy car, toy car's wheels, its action is touching it, then the wheels will turn. So from there, the child will discover that, oh, if I touch the wheels like this way, okay, so, uh, the the wheels will, will start rolling or, or turning rather, rather. So from there, the child recognizes that the action, uh, his or her actions has its own, its own consequences. And in an important concept acquired at this stage is object permanence. That's before, that's before eight months. The baby will stop searching, searching for an object if it is covered out of sight <clears throat> or out of mind. But around eight months, baby will readily physically search for the hidden object, indicating that he or she has already has a mental representation of the object. This is object permanence. All right, so during this stage, object permanence started to happen. Okay, so what is object permanence? So object permanence happens before eight months, before or the child, uh, or before the child becomes eight months, all right, eight months old. So in here, object permanence tend to be, uh, or in simple terms, um, the object started to have its meaning to the child okay it has uh, it will have a mental representation to the child okay like what I've mentioned a while ago uh, the child uh, started to have schemas right so the schemas have mental representation okay so now whenever that meant uh, or that object where the schema started disappears the child will start it to look for it like just for example the mother okay so like what I've mentioned a while ago uh, when the child already developed the schema that the mo that uh, that his or her mother is uh, is that person okay um, okay so object permanence will will started to bloom okay so that's uh, this develops before eight months, okay? So whenever his or her mother disappears, the child will start to look at it, to look for it, because the object permanence started now to develop, okay? So in here, some objects will now have sense to the child, okay? So not only to the mother, but also, like, for example, to its bottle, okay? So some children would not like to drink at a certain bottle okay so uh, s certain bottles like um, yes bottles or whatever okay so other will will 
will drink at a certain bottle like for example the child will only drink at a bottle whose lid is like in a certain shape while other bottles whose lid is in a in a in a different shape well the child will not drink at it okay so uh, what I, what I'm trying to say in here is that um, the, the, the child will start uh, to have uh, a sense of meaning to the objects that he or she is uh, interacting most of the day and if it disappears all right now let's go to the pre-operational stage that's two to seven years old so according to uh, John Piaget during the pre-operational stage the child develops the ability to use symbols such as numbers and words to represent objects so in here this is the time when the child will start to use names okay will start start to use names also we'll start to use numbers okay so that's uh, actually uh, this not only names okay but the symbols itself right because other children would tend to have or to start speaking uh, at the age of one okay so in here they started to use the symbols okay so they will start to recognize numbers like oh that's number one all right and also started to recognize words like step before if they use uh, random uh, words just to just to call the attention of their mom now they'll uh, use the word mama or mom or mom all right and also during this stage according to John PJ the child becomes egocentric so egocentric understands the world only from his own perspective so in here the child tends to be egocentric wherein he understands the world only on how he perceives it so if he perceives that the world is uh, very sweet or very nice so uh, he believes that everything will uh, everyone is nice to him or her or if the world or if the people around him is rude to him so he will uh, consider or um, think of the world that way okay so the uh, Everything is egocentric. So, um, uh, yes, it is centered on how he perceives, he or she perceives the world. Okay, pre-operational is again two to seven years old. So, on top of object permanence, ability for symbolic thinking emerges, seen from the child's use of symbolic play and use of language. So, in here, uh, the child will start to use again symbols. So that's numbers and words. And also, they will start uh, start playing in a very symbolic way. Okay, so like for example, uh, the start will now the child will uh, start now to use Barbie dolls or cars and many more. So use of language or words as symbols for things particularly has critical importance so like what i've mentioned a while ago they will start to, uh, to use now uh uh more often the words mama papa or mommy or daddy or uh and many more okay so that's and also uh further implications for play better to let child play with under unstructured materials to help facilitate his or her symbolic thinking so in here like what i've mentioned a while ago during this stage the child started to use symbols so now these symbols can also a gateway for the parents or the people around him or her to actually observe more of how the child is developing so for one to know more about the child uh, you can uh, just let the child or give all of the toys to the child and let him or her play it in a very unstructured way okay so instead of for example you know that the child is a girl instead of giving him uh, i mean instead of giving her a, a doll let he, let her have any kinds of toys and l see what will the child do on those toys because that will serve as a symbol okay and here the child has still several limitations so during this stage uh the pre-operational the following limitations can be evidently seen in the child. First, the egocentrism. Second, animism. 
Third, inability to dissenter. Fourth, inability for conser conservation concepts. So let's go first to the egocentrism. And here, the child is in enabled to consider another person's point of view. In short, in here, uh, since the egocentrism, I mean, like what I've mentioned a while ago, the child um, focuses on his or her own perception, the child will not recognize others perception and he or she will not understand it at all because in here during this stage the psi the child is egocentric second animism all things are living or animated and capable of intentions feelings and consciousness so in here he believes that everything around him or her or her excuse me <coughs> is animated or it has its own feelings, it has consciousness, and many more. All right. Third one, inability to dissenter. Inability to focus on simultaneous thoughts at the same time. So in here, in simple terms, uh, the child is unable to focus on the things uh, 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 as soon as possible and as long as it can. It can. All right, so you can get the attention of the child. However, it loses it immediately because in here, it's one of the limitations of the child. It, it is unable to, uh, to the center its focus. Fourth one, inability for concentrate, or, I'm sorry, inability for conservation concepts. And here, inability to follow transformations uh, ment mentally. All right, so in here, uh, the child would not able to recognize how things actually, for example, grow or how things uh, start or gr grow into something else. Okay, so the child do not recognize that. So that's one of the thing. Uh, that's one of the limitations of it. Like for example, the child would not recognize or would not be able to conceptualize that a seed can actually grow into a tree. Okay. Just like that, okay. So again, those are the several, or uh, th these are the, the limitations of the child during this stage: the egocentrism, animism, inability to cent to the center, and uh, inability for conservation concepts. Now let's go to the next stage. Now we have the concrete operational thought. The seven years to, to early adolescence. All right. So according to John P.J., during this stage, uh, the child now started to use logic and reasoning. So concrete operational thought that seven to six, seven to years to early adolescence can use logic and reasoning. Cannot accurately consider the hypothetical. So in here, the child will start to use logic and reasoning. So in here. Uh, the child will start to um, to recognize, like for example, simple mathematical uh, operations like one plus one and many more. Okay, so concrete operational that's seven to eleven years old. So the child now becomes less egocentric. So now can now imagine other person's point of view. Now aware that events outside the self have causes outside the self. All right. So in here they become now less egocentric. So they would understand now that other things happen for, uh, not not that deep though, but they would understand that other things can also happen without their influence. Okay, because uh, previously, while they were still egocentric, they believe that all things are related to them. They, th they believe that they do all things. Okay, they can do a lot of things. And all things... Uh, are is because of them okay but now in here during the stage they are now becoming less egocentric they, they are now being aware that a lot of things outside of them all thinking begins to be uh, thinking begins to be more logical but still limited to concrete exper experience in example and make logical judgments based on stimuli that are present to the sense Okay, so in here, like for example, again, like what I've mentioned a while ago, though not that that hard, okay? So like what I, my example a while ago is a simple one plus one. But in here, 
um, an, uh, another example would be, a very logical example would be, they would now start to recognize what is the good and bad. Okay, so like for example, um, their mom uh, wanted them to, uh, to, to go outside of their rooms when their light turns to green. So if it is red, they are not allowed to wake up their mother. If it's green, they are allowed to leave the room, okay? So because in other countries, uh, that's what I've noticed, <laughs> okay? So they give now signs and symbols, and they would understand, the child would start to understand it, okay? So in here, they are starting to be logical. Uh, stimuli from the external world will now uh, be recognizable to them, and it acts as a cue for them. Further, they can perform more operations like counting, classify, and this can better understand the principles of conservation. So in here, they will start, like what I've said, a while ago, counting. So one plus, uh, I mean, one, two, three, and four, and then also they would recognize and classify some colors as well. And the last one would be the formal operational thought that happens at, uh, from adolescence and beyond. The formal operational thought in here, um, think, uh, the individual now starts to think abstract, abstractly, abstractly, deals with hypothetical and speculations. So in here, the child or the person will start to develop uh, hypothetical questions, hypothetical uh, uh, thinking as well. So hypothetical meaning what ifs, okay, and then start to speculate things around them, like why do certain things happen in in their life, okay? So this is the that part. So formal operational, 11 years onwards. So hypothetical deductive reasoning develops, can now reason logically and deal with obstructions, not just concrete things. So in here, uh, like what I've mentioned a while ago, they started to be hypothetically, uh, their, their way of thinking started to be hypothetical. And here, um, also their thinking, uh, they started to think in a deductive way, meaning they can see the whole thing, the, the, uh, the whole picture of a certain scenario, and they can now reduce and uh, think of how it all began. Okay, they can think on that way as well. Capacity for abstractions enables person to use and understand, for instance, algebraic signs and metaphorical speeches. So in here, uh, the child, or the person rather, the person will start now to, to uh, speak, uh, think abstractly. So they would now uh, can handle algebraic subjects, like, I mean, algebra, uh, exponents and also they would now start to understand some metaphors in life so they would uh, in here they would start to also understand some codes in here and many more able to consider all variables and possibilities simultaneously like hypothesis and solve problems by tackling these possibilities systematically so in here like what I've mentioned a while ago, they can now um, think of the what ifs, like the hypotheses, and solve problems by deductive reasoning uh, and many more. Uh, also, they have uh, they can now use of the pendulum problem to test formal operational thinking. So in here, they can now um, process operational thinking and uh, yes, process things and solve problems. All right, so that's the end of this presentation. This is the part one, so there would be another part for this one. So if you have any questions, please let me know. So thank you very much, and see you on our next video. Bye for now.